Woo! Hey everyone, this is Darren from Daily Crypto Tracing. I was coming to live from Vietnam, guys. And it's a great time to be alive. And uh, this is not financial advice. It's just OG in the house expressing opinion. This uh, video is for education, entertainment purposes only. Looks like things are looking pretty green overall. You know, we are seeing KSM, VET, and ADA are in the red right now. But overall, we're seeing things are looking pretty good. So this is good that we're getting a bit of a reversal. In this video, guys, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, fear and greed we're also going to talk about huge manipulation and we're going to talk about the market market makers that are you know uh, manipulating the market guys and uh, this is one of the th reasons that we're seeing things go down or things go up so there's a little bit of manipulation on there remember crypto is unregulated guys so remember do your own risk management and remember secure your crypto wherever you can turn on two-factor authentication whenever you can wherever you can and remember once again this is not financial advice go down there smash the likes and show some love and don't forget to comment guys and subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to see uh, you guys subscribing. So as you guys can see, fear index is down, d d d d down, down. And it's at 11 right now. And also we're going to talk about uh, some TA from OnChain and other great uh, TA guys out there who are saying that the bottom is in, guys, or getting close to it. We're also going to talk about uh, market manipulation and how the market makers create these, uh, you know, fake wicks. Uh, you know, sometimes they create these fake uh, positive wicks, uh, green wicks to kind of draw the retail investors in and then they just, you know, push the markets down and, and that's all kind of uh, part and parcel of the manipulation. We're also going to talk about which cryptos will survive the bear market, guys. So let's jump into that right now. So this is kind of an interesting article. This might be a little bit of a long one, but I just thought that you know, I would go through this together and I thought that you guys would love it. So we're going to talk about uh, which cryptos will survive the bear market. We're going to talk about contagion in the market. You know, how to pick a balanced portfolio, you know, and how to identify the best cryptos, guys. How to conduct due diligence and, you know, we'll talk about the white papers or uh, tokenomics uh, and all that kind of stuff, guys. So it is important to know that uh, this is not investment or financial advice. Remember the value for and remember that the value of your investments and any any income from them can fall as well as rise and you could get back less than you invest so or completely lose all your funds so remember this is absolutely not financial advice but i just thought we'd go through this so, through this together so which cryptos will survive a bear market you know just like the economy the crypto market is cyclical and we all know that the markets have their ups and downs and we all know that uh, crypto is, you know, it, it, it is prone to severe and unexpected volatility. And that volatility can be on the upside or the downside. And we see that some of that volatility is also contributed uh, in, in, in a large part to market makers and also the leverage traders out there also aid in creating a lot of volatility. And, you know, we all saw that we had, uh, you know, over a million billion dollars worth of uh, leverage longs that uh, got wrecked. And that added to the vol volatility. So for traders, this volatility is welcomed, even sought after. But those for holding cryptos or hodling cryptos like you and me who hold cryptos for a very long time, this can be a real headache, guys. And uh, sometimes, you know... You guys have to understand, there's a huge, huge difference between trading and investing. And I'm an investor out there. I know that a lot of my members and a lot of my community out there are also investors, guys. But the volatility does add to the frustration. It does add to the overall noise in the house, guys. And it is just uh, something that uh, we wish we could avoid, but uh, we can't. As with cryptos, you know, cryptos will, all, will survive a bear market becomes harder and harder to tell. But overall, the, you know, the top cryptos will always survive the bear market. We always see that uh, Bitcoin will be going up and, and uh, Ethereum will be going up and all the top 10 layer coins, you know, all these top 10 layer coins, you're all going to see that they're going to be going up like BNB, ADA, Solana, Luna, DOT, Avalanche. Pot, uh, Matic, these type of coins are always going to be going up, guys. Uh, sometimes it doesn't feel like it when the mar when markets are going down, guys. So, you know, this doesn't mean that crypto assets won't drop during a bear market. It means that they will, on average, recover when the trend turns bullish. So, it's very normal, guys. It's absolutely very normal to see, you know, when we're in a, when we are in a, you know, 
bear market to see things drop. And we've seen this in, in the past, guys. You know, we've seen the, we've absolutely seen uh, over the past year, we've seen some micro bear cycles. We saw one in March, we saw one in May, we saw one in June, we saw one in October, and we're definitely living through uh, one in December. And we're living through one right now, guys. So contagion in the market, what is that? What is contagion in the market? Well, in a market driven almost entirely by sentiment, and you know, I agree that the, you know a lot of crypto projects out there is and crypto is a lot of sentiment driven. Okay, and that's not only crypto, also stocks, guys. So you know how the public feels about a company can also influence and impact the stocks, right? Uh, and it may not be it may not be the intrinsic value of the product. So, like for example, Tesla. We love Tesla. But if suddenly we had a whole bunch of Teslas who were on automatic pilot started slamming themselves into walls, even though this could be, you know, less than 001%, but if this hits mainstream media, it could create a negative story, and that negative story could impact the stock price, guys. So you have to understand that in a market driven almost entirely by sentiment, no crypto uh, is immune to contagion, and most of it is tied to BTC. So what that means is when BTC goes down, others tend to follow. So that's just, you know, BTC, you know, leads the market. And we can see that if we look at the total market cap right now, it's a 1.70 trillion. The volumes are 80.66. But you can see that Bitcoin dominance, dominance is 40% of all of the liquidity in the market is being held by one single coin, and that's BTC. So obviously, when BTC goes down, uh, it's going to take the whole market cap down with it, and that's going to affect the liquidity of also the old coins, right? So that's just the way it is, guys. That's just the way it is. Bitcoin is the king, and in most cases, its fluctuation drags the entire market down. This correlation isn't uh, isn't 100% though, but we are seeing that at some point some crypto covers will so at some point some cryptos meaning altcoins because any other coin other than Bitcoin is an altcoin. Okay, so at some point some cryptos will recover quicker than others and go on to new highs. Highs. While some may crash and never recover, how hard a crypto asset crashes often comes down to its fundamentals. Okay, so there are a lot of projects out there where that have very good fundamentals. Sure, their prices can ebb and flow, but at the end of the day, the fundamentals will always keep them afloat and pick them up, and uh, they will always continue to rise over the long term. So this is sometimes when you need to zoom out. Wendy Trendy is your friendy, and you need to just zoom out. So for me, I always, from my perspective, I always invest in the top 50 projects. I tend not to like to go beyond that. Sure, there's going to be some exceptions out there, but I tend to, uh, you know, ape into Bitcoin. I like to have 50% of my portfolio in Bitcoin, of course, uh, and then I like to have the other balance of 25% uh, in Ethereum. And then the other 25% in the top projects, guys. And, you know, we're looking at the top projects here. You know, you know we're Doge's up there, Avalanche, Layer 1, Binance, Coin, uh, Matic, uh, Diagno, Atom, LTC, no Chainlink. We've, you know, we all know we've got tons of uh, Chainlink. Near Protocol, Algorand, yes, we're holding that. Phantom, we're holding that. Uh, so, Mana, we're holding that. ICP, we're not holding that. Vet, yeah, we love the vet. So, Sand, we love the we love the Sand. Uh, so, these are some of the projects that you want to look at. You know, I tend to like to keep uh, looking in the top fifty. You know, we're, we're holding cake, guys. We're holding cake. So, that's where I tend to look. That's where I tend to be. Sure, we have made us Dow in the house, which is you know it's way down there. But you know, that's something promising, right? So overall, you want to have good diversification in your pro, in your in your portfolio, and you want to stick with the top uh, cryptocurrencies because they will ride out the uh, they will ride out the, uh, the you know the bear seasons and the bear traps, and uh, they will survive. So why choose cryptos? Why choose cryptos that will survive the bear market? Well, the answer here is pretty straightforward. It's about capital preservation, right? So you know there's volatility, and things go down, things go up, and remember you do not have any realized losses. Remember, 
remember, you do not have any realized losses unless you sell that crypto. You may have unrealized losses, meaning that the value of those coins go down. But remember, if you don't sell, you're still holding exactly the same amount of coins as when you started with. So the primary goal of any investment is to make profits, right? I mean, that's if you're buying stocks, that's if you're buying gold, that's if you're buying silver, that's if you're buying crypto. The whole the whole thing here is you want to you want to make profit, right? You don't want to buy something to lose something. I mean, that just doesn't make sense, right? Unless you just would like throwing money uh, throwing money out, guys. And we we don't want to do that, right? We absolutely don't want to do that. So from that perspective, uh, you have to understand that making and selecting most resilient uh, cryptos is extremely important. It's even more crucial to select cryptocurrency that can survive a bear market. And the bear markets will come, they will go, and uh, that's just normal, guys. So how do you guys accomplish that? Crypto asset returns have, over the last decade, been well above the equities market, with Bitcoin generally outperforming both gold and S&P 500 over the past 10 years. And that's a fact that's a fact guys that we're seeing that uh, Bitcoin remember Bitcoin is we're not making any more. It's a limited supply. It's completely, uh, you know, a great hedge against inflation. I'm not chilling for Bitcoin of course. Uh, so, you know, we just want to keep that in mind that uh, you guys just need to know that um, it, it's better. And risk can be, be risk can be reduced by having a balanced portfolio. But resilience is crucial in the crypto space, guys. And every market down turn takes its toll. So that's why we also need to have a diversified and uh, balanced portfolio. So right now, there's nearly like, you know, 1,700 cryptos. Nearly 1,700 cryptos have completely lost their value over the last decade. That means there's like 1,700 projects that don't exist. While some may have lost most of theirs over time, looking at the top cryptocurrencies and their price performance may make it, a, a, make it look like investing in cryptocurrencies is easy, but it's really a lot of research is required. And a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people, a lot of particularly newbies, they do not, they absolutely do not, uh, you know, they absolutely do not do research. They just ape into stuff because they, they hear some YouTuber or some article or some blog and they ape into it. And this is a huge mistake, guys. And then, and sometimes they'll ape into like projects that are like 400 Project 298. And remember, you have to remember that there is a lot of uh, promotions, a lot of companies promoting their crypto through various different uh, medias like blogs and this and that. So you guys just have to be, be careful that you're getting the impartial and true information out there. So how to pick a balanced uh, crypto portfolio? The first step to survive a bear market is, according to most experts, is choosing a balanced portfolio. As the saying goes, never put all your eggs in one basket. I've been saying that forever and ever, ever. This is where diversification comes in. By diversifying one's investments, you're effectively guaranteeing that any negative volatility experienced in one crypto won't significantly damper the t returns from the market. So portfolios invested in various crypto assets might uh, asset classes mitigate strategic risks more successfully. Various cryptocurrencies underpin different crypto projects. So having exposure in different crypto pro projects will, uh, at the end of the day, even out your vol volatility because not all cryptos are the same and not all cryptos will go down the same percentage as as uh, others, right? So by doing that, this means that you can diversif d diversify your crypto portfolio based on the crypto project or type of cryptocurrency. So which, which crypto should you pick? And this is a big question. Which one should you pick? Well, like I said, uh, what the OG does is I always stay in the top 50, guys. I always stay in the top 50, uh, you know, like 85% of the time. Sure, I'm going to have some moon, moon bags out there that are, you know, highly speculative, highly high-risk high, high risk stuff out there. But, uh, you know, understandably, it may be impossible to conduct a thorough due diligence of all the cryptos. That's why investing only in blue chips coin with a proven track record may be an optimal strategy for most risk-averse investors. That's that's also too why I have this two-year uh, two-year rule, guys. I tend not to and will not ape into anything that is younger than two years. Yes, yes, yes. Don't beat me up. Occasionally, I will make an exception. Occasionally, I will have what I call my moon my moon boy uh, bag of coins. But remember, the amount of capital that I'm putting in these coins is very short, guys. Very, 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 very limited. And uh, that is, uh, you know, but generally, you know. 
stay in the top uh, 50 guys and these are what I consider the blue chips you know they've been around a long time have a good project have good uh, developer development good devs uh, you know lots of lots of uh, network activity all those kind of things guys so all, although it's worth pointing out that it's entirely possible to lose all of your money when you invest in these for a number of reasons that include potential scams projects failing to achieve their goals and security risks so remember crypto is high risk and never ever Ever invest more than you're willing to lose, right? Note that the crypto community is on a mission and continually addresses scalability, absolute privacy, and interoperability problems. So, gauging which cryptos has utility and which ones doesn't doesn't is critical. Investing in cryptocurrencies with utility ensures that you do not tie your money up in in in, in Ponzi schemes, guys. So, this is very important that you need to look. Does this does this or that crypto that you're looking at have any utility, right? So you guys can also look at, uh, you know, you can go to DeFi Lama, you can look at the 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 uh, total TVL locked, and you know, if you look at a lot of these DeFi coins and layer one solutions, they absolutely do have utility. So you want to ask yourself, do they have utility? What is their total TVL? And these are some of the smart questions that you want to ask, guys. So that is so important, guys. You know, so. You know, when selecting cryptocurrencies, uh, you know that are that that will survive a bear market. It would be better to consider picking cryptos from a few asset classes and their financial metrics, such as market capitalization, liquidity, liquidity, circulating supply, trading volume. This type of data is accessible by Crypto Compare. So you can go to like. Uh, you know, you can go to Live Coin Watch. You can go to Coin Gecko in the house. Uh, if, so, for example, here's Coin Gecko, right? You can go to Coins, and it's all there. So you can all get all this information from Coin Gecko, Live Coin Watch. Uh, it's all out there, guys. It's absolutely all out there. So you can absolutely get it in the house, guys. So you can go to uh, Coin Market Cap. It's also there. So there's a lot of sources of that. When selecting, so when selecting cryptos. For your portfolio, most experts advise a strong allocation of BTC. And I've been saying this over and over again since the beginning of time. And the old coins included could be from various segments of the market, uh, such as exchange tokens, DeFi tokens, security tokens, uh, utility tokens, metaverse tokens, Web3 tokens, and governance tokens. So we've talked all about this. Uh, so like Chainlink is a governance code token, right? So... How to identify which cryptos will survive the bear, the survive the market crashes? Well, you know it's impossible to get it right 100% of the time. No one can safely, you know, uh, you know, no one, no one can actually safely, safely uh, identifies which cryptos will survive market crashes. Bitcoin has so far managed to stay afloat every bear market and quickly recover when things turn bullish. So that is true, and is seen as the de facto safe haven without the space. Uh, with it, you know, without the space, if we could count out stable coins. So what they're saying is, in the, you know, Bitcoin has always, always been able to survive the bear markets, and it's always turned bullish at some point. You know, sometimes we may go through these micro cycles uh, where things look down, 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 like we are now. We're in a micro cycle, right? Uh, you know, we could, we could, we could, uh, you know, hit the bottom, and we could recover very fast. It could be a day, a week, a month. Or this could, this could drag out six months to a year, guys. It absolutely could. But if you zoom out, Wendy Trendy is your friend, you will see that overall, Bitcoin has continued its overall positive trajectory. Uh, and that's just the way it has, guys. Even betting on, you know, even betting on stable coins is seen as a risky endeavor to some investors as the backing behind some of these largest ones in circulation isn't completely transparent. And that Tether is also guilty of that. That is not backed one-to-one -one by the dollar. Similarly, gold-backed cryptocurrencies have often ha have often have a trusted central entity behind them, creating a single point of failure. So there is only one solution to maximizing your chance of making good investments through analysts. In cryptocurrency, two different types of analysts are often used, and they, we call this fundamental analysts, and this determines the intrinsic value or the real value of a token and its potential, and technical analysis to forecast possible future price fluctuations. So let's take a look at that. So, fundamental analysis uh, will tell you where 
to invest. And technical analysis will tell you when to invest, okay? So fundamentals will tell you where, and this is like, you know, the white paper, the tokenomics, the fact sheet, look at the devs, look at how long the pro project's been around, what kind of utility has, those are the fundamentals, right? And then the technicals, uh, so if you neglect if you ne neglect the fundamental analysis, you'll risk placing your money on projects with no real value. You'll probably risk investing in poor quality coins. So, and here we go. So if you neglect the technical analysis, you risk entering at the wrong time and staying in the red, right? This is what a lot of FOMO people do. They FOMO in at the tops, and uh, then uh, when they do that, they end up staying in the red forever, for weeks or months, and simply losing the opportunity to have been able to acquire many more tokens for the same price. And I know a lot of you have done that, where you FOMO'd into stuff, and you thought it was going to go up, and Doge was a good example of that. And I know there's a lot of people in my community right now who are holding Doge, uh, from the SNL days and these coins are still red guys and I know some of the smarter ones have actually dollar cost average to bring the strike price down so that is good so while there are hundreds and hundreds of strategies for technical analysis picking the best crypto that can survive the bear market requires a thorough fundamental analysis which we will focus on next okay so how to conduct due diligence the fundamental analysis of a similar uh, you know, so the fundamental analysis of cryptocurrency is similar to that of a startup. Yes, blockchain or decentralized application DApps project are very similar to startups. They seek to create value by innovating, all right? So once we have evaluated the fundamental aspects of any crypto, we will be in a much better position to evaluate whether or not it can survive a bear market. Note that the blockchain metrics of any crypto such as a hash rate, the number of active addresses, and the transaction values and fees can be ac accessed from various websites while also being available on Crypto Compare's advanced charts, guys. So you can go to CryptoQuant, you can go to, you know, Live Coin Watch and get all this information. Below are some of the steps investors should consider. Uh, below are some of the uh, steps that investors should consider when conducting due diligence on the crypto assets that are considered investing their research should not be limited to these steps nor should they be dependent on any other right so okay so you all you best you always need to look at the crypto's white paper this is so important guys so for any crypto investor go to their website take a look at their uh you know white paper and ask yourself these questions what does it what does the project do what problem does it aim to solve how does this project solve the problem and look at the, to the tokenomics this is so important guys absolutely absolutely so important so take ethereum for example uh, it's a massive success can be attributed to its contribution to kickstarting further development on decentralized finance ethereum gave crypto developers globally a platform to build decentralized applications okay so the key here is to identify the invest and invest in cryptos that aim to solve real life problems like how xrp aims to revolutionize revolutionize the real-time growth settlement system in, in uh, global finance. Note that it is not always easy to determine the market of a blockchain, in this case, the study that uses cases for often, right? So project uh, competing blockchains. So questions. You always also want to look at what blockchains are competing and what are direct competition. So what blockchains are in direct competition and do, do the competing blockchains have better infrastructure? What are the evolutions in, you know, what are the evolutions in the use of the product so far? Is it solving specific problem in the crypto space? So this is also very important. So you guys need to look at that. Also, you need to look at the team. Who's behind the team? Questions. Who are the founders? What are their academic and professional backgrounds? What companies back the project and what's the ownership and governance structure how many people are working on the project is it some some uh, guy in his mother's basement there are you know three people in a garage or is it a diverse team of engineers across the globe guys so that is also important how big is their community how many active blockchains and addresses do they have all this information is available on crypto.com and the crypto compare it's all out there guys look at the hash rate so particularly for proof of work blockchains uh like uh, like doge like bitcoin you uh, you and uh, Ethereum, the proof of work blockchains, the hash rate is the processing power available on the network for mining. 
Most investors, the hash rate is considered a measure of how secure a blockchain is. This means the higher the hash rate, the more secure the blockchain is. It plays a crucial role in preventing 51% of the attacks and double spending, right? So this is, you know, and questions you want to ask is what are the current hash rate compared to other cryptos? Is the hash rate increasingly increasing or decreasing? So another thing you want to look at is transaction value and fees the values of transaction and the fees paper tracks it will help determine the demand for the project so if the if you know the fees are like outrageous of course over time this project is going to lose traction all right so look at the tokenomics a tokenomics essentially deals with how tokens are supplied and their utility when analyzing tokenomics you should have the following questions in mind what is the token used for does it have any use in the project? Is this utility artificial or does it correspond to real need? Is there a max supply of tokens, maximum number? Is the token deflationary? If not, how quickly will the new tokens be created? To whom will they be distributed? Estimate current inflation. Will demand for tokens rise faster than inflation? And how will the token creation be handled in the future? Who will govern these decisions? Also, can you use these tokens to grow your stack, staking, yield, farming, etc.? And this is really important. So, you know, I, I also often only like to buy, you know, tokens that I can stake and do yield farming and gain APY. So the bottom line is, guys, the when choosing cryptos that will survive the bear market, the key is to invest in cryptocurrencies with real projects and real communities behind them. Most people treat cryptos as a speculative asset, but don't realize that these coins are tied to real projects. Blockchain uh, projects me meant to solve real-time world problems. Take XRP Stellar, for example. They aim to facilitate fast, cheap, and transparent global money transfers. Doge can also be also part of that as well because Doge also wants to be able to be the currency of the future, high-speed uh, transactions and low fees. Ethereum and EOS, on the other hand, are designed to facilitate growth of decentralized finance by creating platforms where smart contracts can be used to convert any tangible asset into crypto and streamline the functions. So, guys, this is really just a hope a roundup, guys. So, hopefully, you guys are loving this. And I know it was a little bit of a long one. So, let's jump into, uh, you know, in my opinion, we're seeing that there's a lot of market manipulation out there. So, for example, if you guys look at uh, BTC right now and you look at it on the hourly chart, you can see that we have all of these spikes here, here, and here. And these were kind of fake fake spikes. And what these were done, these spikes were manipulated spikes to create an uh, artificial environment to draw in the leverage traders to really uh, long long leverage Bitcoin. We're seeing that here, not only on the hourly, we saw it here on the daily. It happened here, here, and here, and it's happening right now. And we're seeing right now this weekend rally could be the market ma makers manipulating the markets to create a green candle to kind of draw the leverage traders in, uh, you know, like a moth to the flame. So you guys just have to be really careful out there that do not, do not be do not be faked out and do not be drawn into these fake wicks, guys. So remember, do not leverage trade because there's a lot of market manipulation out there. So I think this is really important to listen to this, guys. This is truly, truly important. I think you guys definitely want to be listening to this one. And uh, let's listen to it. So this is from one of my uh, VIP members. And I think that uh, this is from Dragon in the House. And he really put it distinctly distinctly and he really summed up what is actually going on and why this manipulation is happening and it's really part of the untold story here we go be careful with leverage leverage is sold to you on the basis that you can play with more money by using less well guess what don't get caught in the cycle of always committing money into the charts you think that you're only committing a hundred dollars here and there and every time you lose it you just add another hundred dollars. Well, imagine if you keep adding a hundred dollars every single week, you get liquidated and you do it for a whole year. It's all going to start to add up. This is what the market makers do. They attack the liquidation points. And when they attack the liquidation, and you can points, see the liquidation they are points taking here, taking over the retail traders margin that they committed at the start of the trade, because that's the dead liquidity. Yeah. It's the dead liquidity. They take that liquidity and then they use it to open their existing trades in profit. Sorry, close their existing trades in profit and then open other trades on the opposite side. All right. So I think you guys kind of understand 
that you know sometimes we see these uh, we see these green candles and these are basically the market makers basically baiting you into leverage trading so guys stop leverage trading stop wrecking it for everybody let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at uh, bitcoin in the house right now on the daily so we're seeing bitcoin on the daily right now is at 30 35,957 dollars i think we're going to break above uh you know 36,000 but but just be wary guys just be wary that this is not a you know the market uh, makers you know creating a creating a you know a point where this wick wicks up uh, because they want to definitely have uh, more and more of you uh, you know aping in and then there's going to be a reversal right so right now we saw like over a billion dollars worth of leverage longs liquidated and this could be an enticement wick to bring more of the retail investors into leverage trading so guys just stop it so but overall if we look at this right now it is positive we are going up let's hopefully we can continue this uh, continue this climb I believe that you know if we look at this uh, if we look at the B, uh, BTC on the weekly, we, we have been here before. I've told you that in the previous videos. And, you know, we have some huge support right here between uh, 30 and uh, 29. And, you know, back back in uh, May to uh, July, we, we, we did not go below 29. This is hell is a huge support. So I believe worst case scenario for Bitcoin right now is we, worst case, we could go down to 29. I don't believe we're going to get that bad in the house, guys. I think that we could be held hold right here between 35 and uh, 30 in the house, guys. This is also acting as a huge support as well. So if we can get back up into this box here between, you know, around about 38 and 42, this is going to signal a huge reversal, guys. I really believe there's a huge reversal coming, guys. So this is from Matthew Hayward in the house, and he's talking about the monthly RSI is approach, approaching the levels that have been historically the same of the best buying opportunities in the entire history, guys. So we can see that, you know, this is a huge oversold, huge buying opportunity here and here. And, you know, we have seen these, you know, in 2015, we saw it. We saw this in 2019. We saw it briefly in 2021. And we're seeing it here again. And, you know, whenever we saw these huge buying opportunities when, you know, RSI was approaching these levels, we saw a huge rise to the upside. So this is just more evidence and more credence that I believe we've hit the bottom guys we absolutely hit the bottom in the house you guys need to believe it i believe it right now and let's take a look at the total amount of uh, leverage traders we got 202 uh, million leverage traders have been wrecked in the last 24 hours and you can see that here it looks like the short positions are getting wrecked guys so you know we could have a short squeeze you know hopefully the market makers are pushing things in the opposite direction which would be really good for us right i'd love to see that guys so right now if you look at the doji woji right now so doji woji has has moved up it's at 1390 so that's looking pretty good we have some resistance at 15 15 cents and hopefully we will continue up and if we can break if we can break this downtrend you know this uh, this uh, this uh, downtrend here and break this downtrend and uh, pop out here this is going to be very bullish in the house guys so you're going to love that i'm going to love that so guys let's take a look at the let's take a sh look at shiba ini shiba weeby in the house right now so shiba weeby 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 is also looking pretty positive it looks like we're getting a pretty much almost like a v-shaped recovery here from where we at the bottom we went down and it looks like we're getting kind of a v-shaped recovery and uh, we've got some resistance at uh, 23 8, 9, around 24 so we keep hitting that we hit it once let me just elongate this chart for you so we hit this uh we hit this once twice three times i keep getting rejected we're going to try to uh, get past it a, a fifth time so if we can do that that is going to be very bullish but if we don't then this could signal a bit of a bear trap and then this could push us back down on on this direction but we've got some good solid support around this area here uh and that is around the uh the uh, 17 18 18 level so let's see what happens let's keep on keeping on uh you know if bitcoin can continue uh its bullish climb that is going to be really, really good. And, uh, you know, right now, Bitcoin is looking pretty good on the daily. We're seeing, you know, a nice green candle forming. You know, we're up about 2% as well. And uh, so that is looking pretty good overall. Let's take a look at Ethereum in the house. So Ethereum as well is also looking good. You know, we went all the way down. Looks like we're, you know, we're getting a little bit of a, a V-shaped recovery here as well. So hopefully this will, you know, take us up in this direction. And hopefully we can retrace here. So that would be very, very very good in the house i'm hoping that we can see that and we had this hold 
descending triangle here that went all the way down and we broke way past that so that invalidated that but we have do have some you know we have some sloping resistance right here as well you can see the sloping resistance here let me just take change that to let's change it to white so we got some sloping resistance here so hopefully we can retest that get back up there and then hopefully break past that resistance as well if we take a look at phantom phantom is also doing very good uh, on the daily if I look at phantom on the four hour it looks like a bit more of a v-shaped recovery on the four hour so that is pretty good so we're seeing kind of a v-shaped recovery for phantom here uh, on the four hour so hopefully we can retest this uh, line right here and things should start moving up for phantom so we have this kind of like a trend line here it's acting as resistance now but i think that this trend line could flip soon and this trend line could become uh support so this is this is kind of a uh, you know a resistance line here this was actually a support line uh, before and we did see the support line you know we were supported here uh let me get this tool out of it. Get a tool out of it. We were we were supported here. You know we had a breakdown here, but we still held the support. Then we went up, and then this support here we uh, failed to keep that support, and we collapsed and went down below that. So hopefully this V-shape uh, recovery for Phantom, we can get back up there, and this will start to act as support. So we're seeing that Phantom is at. Uh, two dollars and 27 cents in the house right now so that is looking pretty peachy keen so you guys should be loving it i'm loving it and if you look at uh, if you look at solana as well and if you look at solana on the four hour chart kind of zoom in there a little bit let me clean this chart up for you we can see that solana as well is uh, making also a v-shaped recovery we went all the way down and we're trying to make a v-shaped recovery to the upside so that is pretty pretty good in the house so that is looking pretty good let me just zoom out so we can kind of to get more of a clear picture of actually what's going on so you can see that as well we have this kind of uh, descending uh, this was support this is also acting as, as support and then this support was invalidated and we have been going down diddy diddy down down so hopefully we can get past up this support here let me just turn that white and so we can paint that in let's make it uh, white right there let's see here let's make it white come on come on come on oh gee get your get your tools on get your tools right so we can make that white here so we can we need to see that solana needs to break up past that because we did see that uh on a number of occasions that this support uh you know here we 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 broke out it held we got rejected went down we went all the way down we went up i got rejected we we we, we got up it held and then we got rejected here uh, we passed by it, rejected, rejected. So you can see that, you know, Solana, it keeps getting rejected on this tre trend line. So we really need to break past this trend line, descending trend line. Uh, if we can't uh, get past that, then we're definitely going to be going all the way down to this kind of trajectory here. And that could take us down to $67 an ounce. So we really need to break this cycle, guys. We need, really, really need to break this cycle. And we did see it here before. We did break out and we went to the upside, guys. So hopefully we can do that again uh, for uh, Solana in the house. So let's take a look at the total market cap in the house right now. It's $1.70 trillion. The volumes are 79.22. And the Bitcoin dollars are 39.96. Let's take a look at the coins in the house and then let you get out of here. I know it's a long one, but I just thought it's important that you guys understand of all this and we're seeing right now that bitcoin right now is trading at $35,941 in the house, guys, and it's still up. We're still in positive territory. Ethereum is at $2,500. It's also up almost 1%. We're seeing BNB is up 3.66% as a 387. So just be careful. This is not a fake out by the market makers to kind of draw in you know, the leverage long positions and grow those positions and then, and then wipe them out. So we're also seeing ADA right now is at $1.12, and that's a down uh, as well. So we're seeing that Solana is down $102, and that's at uh, 0 0.37. Seeing Luna is up to almost 7%, so that's good, guys. We're seeing Dot is turning uh, red. That was green earlier. Doge is still Doge is still uh, green, guys. So hopefully this green green can hold. And uh, we're seeing uh, at uh, it's at uh, almost 14 cents. Avalanche is up as well. Uh, the Shiba Inu is up 8% at 22. So guys, I have to keep an eye on the pre-markets uh, as well for Monday. We could be seeing hopefully the Nasdaq, the S&P. 
will go up, guys. So with that being said, guys, please go down and uh, follow me on my Twitter. We've got, uh, you know, 3,784 people following us Twitter. So follow, follow, follow. Go down there. Smash the likes, guys. Show some love in the house, guys and gals. And don't forget to uh, don't forget to go and uh, check out the merch. Your merch, guys. We've got the Week Nancy t-shirts. we got the we got the mug, the mug. Get the mug, the mug. And go and check uh, Zen Music out there and subscribe. Why be get it, get it while you can, guys. So I just want to say God bless you guys. Have a great day. Hopefully you love this video like I love you guys. Please watch to the end. Keep watching. We we'll keep watching. Don't forget to share this video and uh, don't forget to love the channel. Don't forget to give a super chat if you're so inclined. I just want to say God bless you. I know it's a long one, but I just much love in house, guys. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Woo!